In this video tutorial, we are going to complete the double entry bookkeeping entries that are necessary to record the business transactions of Jack for the month of May. Here are the transactions for the month of May. They are listed here from the 1st down to the 30th of May. You should have a copy of the question in front of you. You can download copies of the question from the website. We are now going to start with the transactions one at a time, taking the 1st of May. First of May, the owner put 25,000 into a business bank account. So to record this transaction, we need two accounts. One account represents the fact that the owner has put money in, that is called capital, and the other goes into the business bank account, that is called bank account. So we need two accounts, a bank account and a capital account. One account we are going to debit. Remember, debit is on the left hand side and the other account we are going to credit. So in each case, the debit is on the left hand side and the credit is on the right hand side. Money going into a bank is always on the debit side. So what we will do is we will write in on the debit side of the bank account the date, 1st of May, where the money came from, capital, and the amount, 25,000. And then we'll double enter that into the capital account on the credit side. So over here, on the credit side of the capital account, we will write in, 1st of May, bank, 25,000. Now moving on to the second transaction, 2nd of May, the business purchased office equipment, so office equipment is an asset, for €5,000 paying by cheque. Paying by cheque implies that the money came out of the bank. So we will record that in the bank account and we will need account for office equipment. You already have a bank account and if you look at your bank account you'll see that it has an entry on the debit side of 25000 Now we're taking money out of the bank. So money coming out of the bank will always be on the credit side. So if we're going to credit the bank, well then we must be debiting the other account, which is the office equipment account. So if I just pop those two transactions in, so here on the credit side of the bank account, I put in 2nd of May, office equipment 5000, and then down here I'll put in on the debit side of the office equipment account, 2nd of May, bank, 5,000. Okay, now moving on to the third transaction, which is in fact on the 4th of May. The business purchased motor vehicles on credit from AA Motors Limited for 8,000. Now, on credit means no money changed hands. So we need an account for motor vehicles and we also need an account for AA Motors because we still owe them the money. So we're going to open up two new accounts, a Motor Vehicles account and AA Motors account. Now Motor Vehicles are assets, so when we buy new assets, we debit the asset account. So we'll write in here on the debit side of the Motor Vehicles account, 4th of May, AA Motors and the amount 8,000. And then over here on AA Motors account, we will credit this account here, remember, right hand side of the credit side, and we put in here, 4th of May, motor vehicle, 8,000. Now, moving on to the next transaction, we're moving on to the 5th of May. Purchase stock of goods on credit from Jack D Limited for 2,000. So, purchase stock of goods, this implies goods that are for resale, which should be recorded in a purchase account, and it's on credit, which means no money changed hands, so we need to record an account for Jack O'D to show that we still owe Jack O'D that money. So we need a purchase account and we need a Jack O'D account. We are going to debit the purchases, and in practically every case we use the purchase account, you will debit the purchases. So we put that in there, 5th of May, Jack O'D Limited, 2000. And if we're debiting the purchases, we must be crediting Jack O'D's account. You see here, so Jack D has a balance on the credit side because Jack D is a creditor. This business owes Jack D the money. 
6th of May. Purchase stock of goods paying for check. Purchasing stock of goods. This is buying goods for resale, so it's a purchase account. But we're paying by check, which means the money came out of the bank. Now, so we need two accounts, a purchase account and a bank account. We already have both of these accounts. If you already have the accounts, you don't open up new ones. So if you look at your bank account, what you should see is that you have on the debit side, the left-hand side there, an entry from the 1st of May, and on the credit side, you have an entry from the 2nd of May. And on the purchase account, you have an entry in the debit side. So now money going out of the bank, so money going out of the bank will always be on the credit side. So if the 6th of May purchases 3000 and if I'm going to credit the bank, I must be debiting the purchases. And that's what I do here. Remember, when you're, if you're doing this exercise, you can pause and go back anytime you want to. So moving on, 10th of May. Sold goods for 4000 receiving the money by check. So here we're selling goods at the sales account. Receiving the money by check, that's the bank account. So I need two accounts here, sales and bank. Now if you look up, you already have a bank account with three transactions on it. So we need to open up a new account for sales. Now we are receiving the money. So money is coming into the bank. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to debit the bank. 10th of May, sales 4000 and in the sales account, I'll put the entry on the credit side, 10th of May, bank, 4,000. So, moving on to the next account, 15th of May, paid rent by check. So, with this stage we know check means the money's coming out of the bank, so paying out of the bank, 1,000, and rent is an expense. Now, we don't actually have a rent account, so we need to open one up. So, you have your bank account with four transactions on it, and we now open a new rent account. It's money coming out of the bank, so we know we're going to credit the bank. We have in there 15th of May, 1000, and we will debit the rent account here. In fact, it's worthwhile noting that most expense accounts, whatever they happen to be, uh, the entry goes in on the debit side. So we have on the debit side of the rent account, 15th of May, bank 1000. 16th of May, Paid stationary bill, that's a new expense, we need a stationary account, by check, that implies the bank. So we need bank account and stationary account. So again at this stage we have a bank account, quite a few transactions on it now, we have five transactions in total, and a stationary account. We're paying this money out, so the money is coming out of the bank, so I will credit the bank, and I will debit the stationary account. Moving on to the... 16th of May, again, another transaction on 16th of May, paid advertising by check. Check implies bank. Advertising is another expense. So we have the bank and with the advertising account. Now, as a general rule, you open up different accounts for every different type of expense. In fact, as a general rule, coming across most sort of the accounting transactions, uh, if in doubt, open up a new account. So again, it's money coming out. So what we're going to do is we're going to credit the bank and we will debit the advertising account. 18th of May. Return some goods purchased on credit from Jack O'D Limited for 500. Now, these are the goods we bought in for resale. So it's to do with purchases, except when the goods are returned, we open up a separate account called a purchases returns account. Now we're sending them back to Jack O'D, so it's Jack O'D's account. So we have a purchase returns account there, that's a new account, we need to open that up, and Jack O'D's account, that's an account we already have. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to credit the purchase returns account because the goods are being sent back from our business to Jack O'D's business. So 500 euro here. And then over here we're going to debit Jack O'D's account because we're sending the goods back to Jack uh, and we no longer owe the money. So we put that in there, 18th of May, purchase returns, 500. So you can see here, Jack is a creditor of 2000 from on the 5th of May for goods that we purchased from him. And then on the 18th of May, we sent 500 euro worth of goods back, which reduces the amount of money that we owe. 20th of May, 
owner took 300 out of the bank for his own use, so bank account, and the owner took money out for his own use, that is referred to as drawings. So the owner taking money out of a business for his or her own use is referred to as drawings, so we need a drawings account. So the bank account, now quite a lot of transactions on it, and the new account here, a drawings account. So if you look at your bank account here, and it is the owner taking money out, so we know at that stage money coming out is always on the credit side. So we credit the bank, so we debit the drawings account. 22nd of May, paid the balance owed to Jack O'Dee by cheque. Now we have a Jack O'Dee account, and we know that cheque means bank. So if we have a look at this here, we can see Jack O'Dee, we did owe 2000 we sent back 500 euro worth of goods, so we now owe Jack O'D 1500 euro. So we're going to write a check, so the money is going to come out of our bank account. So 22nd of May, Jack O'D limited, 1500 euro. And over here on the debit side of Jack O'D's account, we will put in 22nd of May, bank, 1500 euro. 23rd of May, paid wages by cheque, so cheque implies bank, and wages are another type of expense, just like the uh, stationery we had earlier. So it's bank, and we open up a wages account. Money coming out, so what we'll do is we'll credit the bank, so we'll see here, we have the money coming out, and we will debit the wages. All expenses are, well, generally speaking, will be uh, debit entries. 25th of May, let part of the premises receiving rent by cheque. So cheque implies bank, but in this case we're receiving money in. So it's to do with the rent, but it's different than us paying rent. We're actually getting an income out of this. So we give it a new name just to, to avoid confusion. Uh, we definitely need a bank account. So we go up and look at our bank account, which is getting quite a lot of trans transactions on at the moment. And we'll open up a new account, which we will call the rent received account. So this is money going in, we're receiving this, so therefore it goes in on the debit side. So 25th of May, rent received 280, and then over here on the credit side of the rent received account, I'll enter in 25th of May, bank 280. 26th of May, paid for travel and motor expenses by cheque, cheque implies bank, travel and motor expenses, that's a new expense, so we need to open up an account for that. So you have your bank account, and we have, down here, a new account, travel and motor expenses account. Money being paid out, so we're going to credit the bank. So we just put that entry in there. And over here we see we will debit the travel and motor expenses account. 27th of May... Owner took stock to the value of 100 for his own use. Now, this is a, a, a slightly tricky one, but if the owner takes anything for his or her own use, it's drawings. So we have a drawings account. Now, the owner is taking stock. The stock implies that this is goods that were bought in for resale and now have been taken by the owner. So this is going to be an adjustment on the purchase account. So we have both of these accounts. We have the purchase account. If you look up at your purchase account, you should have two transactions on it, the 5th and the 6th of May, and on the drawings account, you should have one transaction on it from the 20th of May. Now, the owner is taking money out, so when goods came in, we debited the account, now with goods going out, we're going to credit the purchaser account. So I just put that in there. 27th of May, drawings, €100. Euro. So if I'm going to credit the purchase account, well, then I must be debiting the drawings account. So 27th of May, purchases €100. Euro. So sold goods on credit to G. John for 350 So we're going to do here is going to credit the sales and debit the G. John account. And then finally, paid A motors the amount outstanding by cheque. So if you look at your bank account, quite a lot of transactions, and you see that you owe... Uh, 8,000, so you credit the bank and debit AA Motors. Thank you. That's this question completed.